Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Saturday the 22nd of October 2022. We're publishing our Gold and Silver Weekly Update for the week ending the 21st of October. Today's video might be a little shorter than normal as we have some functions to go to later today. So without wasting your time, let's get to it. First precious metals, gold rose $14 last week, rising from 1644 to 1658, having hit a high of 1668 and a low of 1618, a rise of 0.9%. In sterling terms, gold finished the week at £1,467, down £4, and in euros it closed at €1,680, that's down €11. Euros. Silver performed better rising $1.15 from $18.29 to $19.44, having hit a high of 1944, so it closes its high, and a low of 18.24, a rise of 6%. In sterling terms, silver closed at £17.19, up 82 pence, and in euros it closed at 19.71 euros, that's up 0.88 euros. The gold to silver ratio obviously fell, and it fell from 90 to 1 to 85 to 1. Now, looking at the prediction we made last week, we said we expect to see gold trade between 1600 and 1700, and silver to trade between 1750 and 19, with 17 and 20 dollars as outliers. Well, gold traded comfortably within our normal trading range, while silver traded within our normal range, but it did rise considerably on Friday, taking it into our outlier range, but still closing well within that. The difference between gold's high and low was $50 last week, and the difference between silver's high and low was $1.20. About half the difference compared with the previous week. Now let's take a look at other financials. Bitcoin currently stands at $19,151. That's down just $10 on the week. Equities were stronger, with the Dow Jones closing on Friday at 31,082, up 748 points on the day and up 1,448 points on the week. The S&P 500 closed at 3,752, up 86 points on the day and up 169 points on the week. And the Nasdaq Composite closed at 10,859, up 244 points on the day and up 538 points on the week. So all in all, a good week for equities. Oils were mixed slightly. Brent crude closed at $93.50, that's up $1.87. And WTI crude closed at $85.05, that's down 56 cents on the week. The dollar index stands at 112.01, and that's down 1.3 points on the week. Let's now take a quick look at the economic data announced last week and what we've got coming this coming week. OK, looking at the economic data announced last week, we can see that on Monday, the Empire State Manufacturing Index, which we said was worth looking at, actually was down quite considerably, far more than expectations. It was down 9.1 for October compared to expectations of minus 5. However, the Industrial Production Index actually was quite positive, with a 0.4% gain for September. Building permits and housing starts varied. Building permits were slightly higher than expectations, housing starts slightly lower. Then on Thursday, we had the initial jobless claims coming in at 214,000, which were down both against expectations and the previous week. However, continuing jobless claims were actually up. And then we had the leading economic indicators announced that morning at minus 0.4% compared with minus 03 And then on Friday, we had the index of common inflation expectations for quarter three at 3% compared with 3.1%. So really a mixed bag of data. None of it particularly that important. However, that cannot be said for this coming week. On Monday, we have the S&P US Manufacturing and Services PMIs. They're worth noting. On Tuesday, we have the Consumer Confidence Index. Again, worth noting. Wednesday, trading goods and new home sales. Okay, we'll take a look at that, but we don't think that's going to have a huge impact. However, what's going to gradually become more important will be Friday, but on Thursday, we have real gross domestic product, as well as the jobless claims. But Friday's the key one, 
because we've got the PC price index and the core PC price index. Be interesting to see if that rises or falls. And this will be the last PCE price index before the FOMC meets in November. On top of that, we have consumer spending and the UMIG consumer sentiment index. So really, all eyes, there'll be reasonable eyeballs on Monday, but all eyes will be on the data on Friday. Going back to gold and silver, we can see that gold was on a slight descent until Friday last week, where it recovered losses and moved into positive territory. The Bank of Japan intervened in the Forex market and sold US dollars to prop up its own currency, thereby putting the dollar under a little pressure, which is why it fell 1.3 points. To the upside, and we've said this before, we have resistance at $1,680, further resistance at $1,700, and considerable resistance at $1,750 for gold. Towards the downside, we have support at $1,600. And should this break down, and we still believe at the moment this will eventually do so, then $1,500 is the next target. Silver rose strongly on Friday partially again because of the Bank of Japan's intervention and also partly because there were some news reports suggesting that there may be some division amongst the FOMC members of the Federal Reserve as to how aggressive they should be moving forward, with some apparently suggesting that future rises, while should happen, should be a little tamer. Of course, we need to verify whether such reports are accurate and to what degree they apply. Now $18 has certainly acted as good support for silver so far, and $20 strong resistance. Now whilst there may be some follow through with the rise on Friday into Monday morning, it's still rather difficult to see the case for rising silver until either a global recession is ruled out or the Fed alters its course on interest rate rises. Now with that in mind, should silver break below $18, then we can see it eventually dip to ultimately towards 16 and it will be at that point when we will see if it can follow through downwards towards 15 or not. Or whether it will be around that level a pivot could actually occur. So with all this in mind and the geopolitical situation not really improving between Russia and Ukraine, we expect to see gold trade again this week between $1,600 and $1,700, with 1575 and 1625 as outliers in case there are some unexpected announcements. Silver may be a little more dynamic, and so we expect it to trade between $18.75 and $20.50. And because of the expected data announcement on PCE on Friday, we can expect to see a spike either upwards or downwards. And so we're going to be a little more cautious with our outlier range and suggest that silver could actually move between $17.50 and $21.25. What are your thoughts? Do you see silver rising this coming week? If so, by how much? Please share them. Meanwhile, thank you so much for listening. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel. Not forgetting to press the bell sign so you're notified of our videos as and when they're published. And as always, we wish you a safe, enjoyable weekend and prosperous week ahead. And before we go, we're putting links to the Pure Gold Company and Bullion Vault below in case you think it's starting to become time to consider purchasing gold and silver again. Illuminati silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.